Uh, Stevie Boy, thank you for your super chat, my friend. Appreciate you. Said, so I keep hearing that there's plenty of time left in the transfer window. Does this apply to the contract situation with Verge, Mo and Trent? I'm going to read you out something, mate. I'm going to read you out something that made me pause for a second to take some thought. So this comment came into the athletic comment section and it came in from a guy, I think his name was Ian, bear with me. The comment basically said that the media are supposed to be challenging the clubs, not cheerleaders for the clubs. And what we've seen over the past couple of years at Liverpool is that everybody is just towing the company line and everybody is doing the company's bidding and everybody is talking about what the club wants and what the club is briefing. That's not the job of the media. The job of the media is to represent the readers and to ask challenging questions. And tell me I'm wrong here, but with the greatest of respect to all the written journalists that are doing the rounds on the Liverpool B, how many of them actually ask difficult questions? How many of them actually put themselves out there and stick up for us, the fans? I don't see it. I see so many people just kowtowing and bootlicking. And it's not healthy. And I'm going to try and explain to you why it's not healthy. In any walk of life, if you've got anybody who is unchallenged or too powerful to be questioned, it's not a healthy position. And at, right now, in the football landscape, I feel like there aren't enough people trying to hold their... Um, yes, it's this comment here, thank you. So this comment comes from a guy called Ian T. And he said, no sagas to resolve, no glaring gaps to fill, no scattergun recruitment drive, no expensive dead wood to shift. Journalism should be about questioning the club narrative, not simply repeating it. The need for midfield reinforcement seasons ago was clear, as is the current need for a backup to a 30-year-old midfielder with Toro Endo. Having to gang press your best number eight into a number six position should never be the go-to option for a club like Liverpool. And that line stands out to me. Journalism is supposed to be about asking the difficult questions. And there's too many pussies currently operating in the journalistic circles. And we need more people like us, like you, the Anfield Agenda viewers, who actually want to question and hold the owners to account. Because this nonsense of they saved us and all the other positive shit that I get told about all the time is just that. I have no want, desire or will to be happy, happy about FSG. I want FSG to do the best for the football club, the best that we can afford to do. And they're not doing it. And I don't understand how we've gotten to the point where we just accept the bullshit narratives that we don't have money, that the wage bills are too high, that the club can't figure it out. It's all horseshit. Are you telling me that we couldn't have sorted out Trent and Verge's contract and Mo's contract? Of course we could. It's bullshit. Are you telling me that we couldn't be trying to act, be active in the transfer market right now if we really wanted to? Of course we could. It's all bullshit. And it's nonsense. And there's too many people swallowing it. Ultimately, everybody watching this wants Liverpool to be successful. Nobody wants Liverpool to be put in harm's way, and that definitely includes me. But I know what's possible. You know what's possible. And you've seen what lesser clubs are able to do. Why do we always have to accept what we're told? Why should sixth highest spending and a rebuild season be good enough? I've heard every argument from net spend not being the be all and end all to the club spending what it can afford. And every single one of them is just bullshit. It's just lazy lies and we deserve better. Liverpool Football Club exists to win. Remember that. To win. Not to be there or thereabouts. I, do you know the argument about how many times we finish second to Man City or we've got to three European Cup finals? Yeah, we've done all that. But wouldn't it be nice to win a few more? Are you telling me that in all of those seasons where we were going head to head with Manchester City that the obvious deficiencies in our squad may not have cost us points? That not replacing centre-backs may not have cost us points? That not bringing in a midfielder last year didn't cost us a Champions League place? They did. You know it, I know it, the club know it, the journalists know it. But nobody's seemingly willing to put their balls on the line and talk about it. I am. And the reason I do it is because I love the club. I don't love John W. Henry, Tom Werner, Mike Gordon. I couldn't give a fuck about them. Because they'll be gone in 10 or 15 years. The football club will still be here. And we want to challenge. And we want to win. And we deserve to win. 
So all of these things, the Husqvarna deals, the Nike deals, they're not worth a shit to us unless we see it replicated on the pitch. And that's what this is about. So there was a tweet earlier on today that went out from one of the guys who writes about football on the Echo and football finance. And it almost made me throw up. This is what it was. The post was, Husqvarna can't play number six or left back. It's a Swedish lawnmower company. What it can do is play a small part in helping to fund the growth and success on a daily basis where a rival is making 250 people redundant. Again, we're supposed to be grateful for this? It's their fucking job to bring more money into the football club. And unless we see the players on the football pitch become world beaters and invested in, all of this is just noise. There's too many yes men and not enough people who challenge authority. And we need to challenge. We need to start speaking up. I'm sick of it. I went on The Athletic to try and comment. And I was asked the same thing that you will have been asked so many times. How many times have you been to Anfield? Tell me you don't know anything about Liverpool without telling me you don't know anything about Liverpool. Who are you trying to impress? Who are these lick arses trying to stand up for? Because the owners don't give a damn about them or me or you. They care about their bottom line. This white knight syndrome that some of these clowns have needs to be called out. You've every right to expect better. And you shouldn't be ashamed of asking for it because you're all reasonable, rational people. We're not asking for Mbappes to be coming in every season. But why aren't we in the conversation for a Declan Rice? Why aren't we in the conversation for a Jude Bellingham? Why aren't we getting these deals done? Because the owners are cheap. You know that's the answer. I know that's the answer. It's a fucking joke. How many times have you been belittled? Anybody watching this now, whatever part of the world you're from, how many times have you tried to make a point on social media about the club that you love and the immediate response to you is, you know nothing. How many times have you been to Anfield? Says it from a home on his sofa. You can't win these debates because they're not debating in good faith. They're idiots. And I have to do it because nobody else is willing to. So I'm going to take the hard road and I'm going to continue to ask for the best for us, for a football club and to try and hold the owners to account. I've got no bad blood with any of these people, but I know bullshit when I smell it. I've been around long enough to see through this crap. And here's the problem. If somebody, let's say, and I don't mean to aim this as a dig, I'm picking a journalist at random. James Pierce. I love Jimmy Pierce. I think he's a brilliant journalist. If James Pierce went in and said, surely we can afford to spend more money. Surely Liverpool should be in the conversation for X and Y. We all know what likely happened. James will eventually start to see his opportunities diminish. Because he had the balls to ask the hard questions. Now again, I've just picked a journalist at random here. But it's the same all the way through. The club are so powerful. They're so influential. That anybody who's a dissenting voice gets ignored. Or gets hushed. Well, sorry. We have the freedom of the internet. And we're going to keep asking for it. Because we deserve better. It's as simple as that. I don't get it. Don't be afraid to ask for more. Because you should be. We should ask for every goddamn player that we can get. The owner and the manager should be in sync. Winning should be a bare minimum. Not qualifying for the Champions League. Not bringing in new Nike commercial deals. Putting trophies inside the AXA training facility and inside Anfield. That's what counts. Not gallant second bests. We don't exist to be second best. We exist to win trophies. It's a sport. That's what it's all about. Nobody cares about second place. Nobody cares of qualifying for stuff. We want to win the damn things. Uh, Craig, you speaking up is why I'm on Anfield Agenda, said Billy. Look, I'm sorry I come across ranty at times, but it gets really saddening for all of us when we're constantly demeaned for wanting better. There's no other walk of life that I can think of where we'd be shot down like this for trying to hold people to account. You do it with politicians. You do it with anybody else in public life. Why aren't we doing it with our football club? And why is dissenting questions such an ugly thing? Should communication not be there? Should we not have the right to ask these difficult questions? Should we not be explained to? They're happy enough to take your money. They have to be held to account. Simple as that. 
Anyway, thank you for listening to my little rant. I'm going to go into the comments now and see how you guys are feeling before we get back to the news. Uh, they'll call you entitled as if you've ever been to Anfield. Call you a FIFA. I know. I've got it all, Shay. All the time, mate. Because they don't have an actual argument. They know deep down. And look, I'm not here to say that FSG are the worst owners in the world. They absolutely are not. FSG are middle-of-the-road owners. They've done some good stuff, and I've always tried to be honest and credit them for that good stuff. I'm not somebody who's blindly angry about anything. All of the stuff that I talk about, I think about from every angle. I try to credit them where they deserve credit, because they have done some good stuff for our football club. But every single one of us, man, woman, and child, knows we have the capability to do more. And when you know that, and you're so close, my biggest anger is that Jurgen Klopp left this football club with less than he should have. He worked miracles. We're blessed to have had him. But he could have done more with more backing. Uh, Craig, I wouldn't worry about your next invite to LFC charity events. You're bang on, though. We appreciate you. I've given up, Mark. I've, I've thought about this over my days off. And I've just come to the conclusion that I got into this to speak up for people who haven't had a voice. And I'm trying to continue in that vein. So yes, I got slightly distracted. Yes, I felt slightly sorry for myself that I wasn't getting these invites. I put my hands up to that. That's on me. But when I took time, spoke to my family, spoke to my friends and thought about it, my job is to represent you. And my job is to speak up on your behalf. The people who feel disenfranchised by the club. And there are two levels of fandom in our football club, whether we want to speak about it or not. There are the super fans... And there are the rest of us who only count when the top tier have been looked after. And that's not great. Uh, you speak your mind, my friend. Love you all, said Liz. Thank you, Liz. It's unfair that just because we aren't a plastic oil club like City, we can't even be involved in the conversations for superstars. It's really frustrating, isn't it? Like, let's go back to Nico Williams, just for a moment, just to fulfil this conversation, to bring a full circle. Nico Williams is attainable. The transfer fee is more than fair. The wages, yes, it would be on the higher end for us. I, I get that. But sometimes you have to make the leap. Look at Virgil van Dijk. When we signed Virgil and when we signed Alisson, they were thought of as really, really high transfer fees. And look how quickly we stopped talking about the number. Look how quickly we went from being a team that flattered to deceive to being a team that was really challenging. And... That's clear as day to me about Nico Williams. He is a game changer. I don't know who the best centre-back is for our system. I really don't. But I know that Nico Williams is available, attainable, and can make a huge difference. Uh, Shea said, Nico Williams is a very realistic addition, but they'll use the wages excuse. Yeah, but here's what I'd say, Shea. You can't tell us about all the money you've saved and highlight it in articles and speak about this 18.7 million. And then when it's asked to be spent, cry poor mouth. You know, you can't have it both ways, which is what they want. The club seem to want their cake and to eat it. Tell us how great they are about money. Tell us how brilliant they've been about attracting new commercial deals and then cry poor mouth. It doesn't really add up, does it? And it gets really even more worrying when a strategic part of the football club is up in the air. So we've got two, th two of the three owners, John W. Henry and Tom Werner, who can't even decide publicly whether they want to move Premier League games around the world or not. One of them wants to, Tom Werner, wants to take Liverpool to LA, to Abu Dhabi, to Singapore, to Auckland, wherever. And John W. Henry said he's got no interest in it. That doesn't look like joined up thinking. And they're, they're also absent owners. And we need to acknowledge that as well. They don't have to deal with the shit you and I do. They don't have to go into school, work, college, the pub, wherever, and listen to the banter. It's just swans around Boston. He has to worry about the Red Sox, because that's the city he lives in. But he doesn't give a damn about Liverpool. And I'm sick of having to be respectful of somebody who's shown us no respect. 